Hello, my name is Leora. I'm a part-time furniture flipper out of Windsor, Colorado. What started as a hobby in 2020 is now a full-blown obsession. I love taking old, unloved furniture and creating beautiful works of art. Come join me in my studio to see how I make diamonds from the rough. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I am participating in my very first Ugly Duckling Challenge, hosted by the lovely Corey over at Desert DIY. The rules of this challenge were very simple. I had to take the ugliest duckling or piece of furniture I could find and make it sparkle. This Habitat for Humanity Restore find was an easy winner. I have a couple of tools that are for upholstery. This is for removing staples. You're supposed to use a softer hammer because it's plastic, but I just use a regular one. Um, I just tap it under there and it'll pry up anything. Wires, grab a hold of it, and then twist. I, don't pull because um, you're never going to win that battle and it's going to exhaust you. But if you grab a hold of it and you twist the pliers, it just pulls it right out. Your double welt cord is to hide the uh, fabric is stapled on. And I found a staple. I'm pulling it out. There's probably about 10,000 of these. So typically a double welt cord is glued on as well as stapled on. This one looks like it's mostly glue. I wanted to slow down again so you could see what I'm doing. My new fabric there and then I'll put um, nail head trim and it will cover up any place that I have fabric uh, stapled down. I am careful about just grabbing any of the material that comes off of here because you never know where a staple is still holding on. I forgot to mention, I got this on Amazon. I took the Chair Whimsy course and she is amazing, Chair Whimsy. Um, her course taught me who doesn't know anything about sewing and who doesn't know anything about fabric and has never had the slightest bit of interest in reupholstering a chair, how to completely take apart, reassemble, and build a chair that's comfortable and looks beautiful. And I did it on my first try and it's amazing. So I highly recommend Chair Whimsy. Wearing gloves when you're um, doing reupholstery stuff is pretty advisable, to be honest. I don't wanna pry against the wood because I don't wanna scar this up. So I'm gonna go from the top down. I've learned all this the hard way, so you can learn from me and not have to do it the hard way yourself. Try to pry it all the way out and then I just twist and it's done. And I'm not kidding when I say there's probably a thousand staples in a chair depending on how many times it was recovered. <laughs> but once I was reupholstering re it myself, guess what? I also put on a thousand staples. to remove this and I realized that up here at the very top this is mostly put on with a very thick layer of what looks like Gorilla Glue there's just not very many staples holding this on most of its glue if every chair is built differently you're just kind of trying to um, figure out how was yours put together is it still the factory finish if you can find a piece that's just the way the company made it in the first place then it's gonna be a much easier refinishing job for you. And now here's the fabric that was left behind. This is what it used to look like, much more vibrant. Here's what it looks like now because it's been worn so much. So it probably was kind of pretty to begin with. It's not really so much now. Here's where I landed on day two. Here is our nude chair. I'm going to definitely get rid of this but this foam is still in good shape. I took the chair outside so I could spray primer over those details that are too difficult to brush and now I won't have to worry about my paint not sticking. I used about three quarters of a can. I'm not concerned about the um, possibility of bleed through as much as I was concerned about the fact that this was uh, slick and glossy that paint wouldn't stick to it. This is not a crack in the wood. This is like a crack in that thick coating of shellac that was on there. 
Now that's a little bit of a crack that I want to fill. And here's some artful distressing that's very manufactured. I'm gonna go ahead and fill all these little marks that I don't like. Last night I put on very thin layers of Dixie Mud, which is a wood filler that I like to use when I have not very deep cracks or if I have uh, minor things to fix. I just have a rad pad. This is made by the Surf Prep Company. I cut them in half because they're a huge square and my hand is small, so I cut them in half and I get twice as many. This is all I'm looking for. I just wanted these weird little patterns and divots to be filled in. And I'm gonna wipe down all the sanding dust and sand off the rest of this. Behold, this is the inspiration. I absolutely love these papers. This is from Whimsy Kell. This is Dapper Dan, and I'm a cat fanatic. So you will um, probably see quite a few cats come out of my shop. And then these are the colors I'm gonna use. I finally have it ready to get some paint on. I have a Chris Donna brush. This is the Happy Creating. This one's a Daydream Apothecary, and it's signed by Llewellyn. This is her uh, brush called it's just paint. <laughs> uh, this thing is so soft. All I've done so far is this, which I'm sure is really good for the bristles. I have guac and roll and Elvis parsley. Which I love this already. And this brush feels amazing in the hand. It's not globbing up in the details. This is why you always have to trust the process. The first coat is a liar because this looks like the Grinch and it looks terrible. Now I'm ready to put on this second coat with you guys. I'm gonna show you everything that I do, everything that I use, everything that I have to have with me whenever I'm gonna be painting. Before I do any second coat, I want my very light rad pad. This is a very fine, it's also very used. So when I say sand, I don't mean being here grinding, I just mean knocking down anything like dust particles, in my case probably cat hairs that I've dragged in, then microfiber cloth. This is the Simple Artist brush that I got at Michael's in like a pack of 80 various brushes, paint brushes that I used yesterday, and I kept it overnight in a Ziploc bag. Also a necessity, coffee. Definitely coffee. Another nice tip if you're having trouble with opening jars, because sometimes these can really get stiff and hard to open, is to put some saran wrap over the top before you put the lid on. I have done it. I don't do it consistently, but it works. Since my brush is a little bit wet, it is gonna glide on so much easier. And now that we're on the second coat, all that streakiness just disappears right away. Back to my little cheapy brush. Just putting a little bit of paint on the tips. We're not talking a lot of paint. And I'm gonna get into these little details. Now, how likely is it that anyone is going to lay on the floor and look upside down to see if I've covered everything? Not likely. But it bothers me if I know that I've left little spots. I think that looks unprofessional. While this is still wet, I am going to start showing you um, the extraordinarily simple blend that I'm doing. I, I hesitate to even call it a blend because it's hardly that. Just want to keep my base coat wet and then a little bit of the lighter green, all this parsley, right over the top of it. And now we're gonna go back and forth. This is coat number two. And while I waited for that to dry, I busted out the velvet I wanted to use as the backing of this chair as well as the armrests. 
I googled how to remove wrinkles from velvet and learned that you use steam from the iron without actually touching it. So I've got the padding that came out of it because like I said, this is really good shape. It's not mouse chewed, it wasn't stained. I am building this back up the way I took it apart. The individual things are not very expensive necessarily, but you can really go down a rabbit hole and spend a lot of money on reupholstery projects. This is the most expensive part. This um, high density and medium density foam is expensive and you don't get a whole lot of it. So you don't want to waste it. And if you find some that's in good shape, reuse it. This is where I'd cut it off recently and look at that, it's just perfect. I love that. I love it when things just work out and I didn't even have to try. And then I'm going to use some spray adhesive for upholstery. This is called Foam and Fabric Spray Adhesive Web Spray Adhesive. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a pair of, if you touch those scissors and cut paper with them, I'm going to disown you scissors. These are fabric scissors. Um, these are my Fiskars, I got them at Joann Fabric. The back of this, this is this is the front. This is the part that's gonna your back is gonna rest on, and this is the part that will be right here, facing out. I don't need to do anything to this. Hold six to eight inches from the surface to be bonded, and apply an even coating. That sounds pretty straightforward. Look at that! It's like a little web. That's all there is to that one. I'm gonna let this dry. Ah, here, look at that. So there's a little wrinkle right there. Just gonna lift it up, give it a little spray, pull that wrinkle out, and lay it down. Because that's the key to a good reupholstery job is having everything be very, very tight. It is important to note that while I said the upholstery stuff is not overly expensive, mama don't waste. So what I did with, after I cut off the bottom um, sheeting for the cushion down here, the big one on the bottom, I found a little bit of spare and uh, yeah, it just happens to be exactly the right size for the armrests. The armrests did not previously come with any Dacron over them, but I'm going to be extra and I'm going to put them on. The moment of truth has arrived and it's time for me to break out my stapler and get going on the upholstery part. I started by measuring twice and cutting once so that I could get the exact right width of velvet for the backing. And then I tacked it in place with some tape and then started putting in the actual staples. It's important to staple an anchor at the top and then an anchor at the bottom or the front and the back depending if you're doing a vertical or horizontal surface because you want to make sure that it has enough tension going front to back and side to side so that you don't end up tightening it all up in one direction and then it's too short to pull across. Seriously, that looks even better than I thought it would. As per usual, I have changed my mind. So I was going to use a different fabric that I got on clearance a long time ago and it had a pattern on it, I was gonna paint it, but then I went to Hobby Lobby to get the nail head trim that I want. They didn't have it, but what they did have, faux leather. And this faux leather has a little bit of a stretch to it. I don't care about the color because it's gonna get painted anyway, so any color was fine. And I got three yards for 18 bucks, so that's amazing. This velvet, what you're looking at here, $50. Velvet is super expensive. Enough to do this part, do the um, armrests in the purple velvet. I think that's going to be gorgeous. And I will consider it $50 well spent. Um, 
So I've got my fabric laid out. I just took the cushion, laid it face down, got my fabric out and basically cut a square. I think that's gonna look pretty sweet. It almost blends in with the floor. <laughs> and I don't really know what I'm doing on this part. Uh, I've never, never done a reupholstery quite like this. So I'm kind of guessing, kind of remembering how the course went. Wish me luck. All was looking pretty good on this first attempt at getting the seat recovered. And once I had that in place, I started looking at how to make it the color I wanted. Sometimes things just don't work out. And this chair is one of those things because it looks perfect. Let me show you. It's tight without being bounce a quarter tight. It's still nice and cushy. I don't love the corner fold, but I don't hate it looks pretty good down there but check this out here's where it goes awry you see that and over here you see that that is where I made the slice too deep and I keep doing that I have done that on a couple of chairs and I've had to fix it in order to make this not wasted for one thing because I never want to waste material even though this was cheap um, is to remove the staples of which there are many because I put it on the way I wanted it to be forever. Let's see if I can use it for the top back of the chair. So sometimes you just have to live and learn. I'm going to take this piece off um, of the lower cushion and I'm going to uh, use it as a template to give me an idea when I cut the next piece. Here is the material that I've pulled off. And then my second thing I learned is that I should paint the material before I put it on. This is just paint straight on the leather and this is paint with a primer and I want to have a white backing before I put on the decoupage paper. So I wanted to try this paint and this paint. This is one coat. It's not scratching off. I didn't prime it. It is really, really good. It's just sticking on there and it's still soft and supple. Well, I made a mistake. Uh, like I said, I've never done this particular kind of chair before, so ex expect mistakes. That's what we're here for, so I'm gonna have to show you what mistake I made and how I think I'm gonna fix it. I noticed that when I pulled off the old Dacron, it hung a little past each end, and that's what I missed when I was putting it back on. I thought it matched up exactly. The Dacron has to extend past the cushion to attach to the chair frame, which I'm pointing at and you can't see on camera. I thought I would try spraying on with my webbing and sort of doing a patch job here. I am literally just trying something for the first time and seeing if it works. And if it doesn't, my other option is to take this part off, know that it's perfectly good, roll it up and use it for the next thing that's roughly this shape and size and cut a new piece that's slightly longer. Do I want to do that? No. But if I have to, I have to and such is life. And I learned. So please learn from me. Don't make the same mistake. Change of plan number 287. I'm going to have to put my white fabric, the faux leather that I tore off the bottom. This is what I'm gonna use um, as my back fabric. I think my little patch here should work and I can just make sure that it's not going to have a line across the top. And I haven't wanted to cut anything off yet just in case I cut something I need again. I had what I can only hope is a stroke of genius. Maybe it wasn't at all, but I put a little bit of that spray webbing down behind here just so this fabric, which has a kind of a slickery, silky back, isn't sliding all over the place while I'm trying to work with it. I'm just going to give myself like a six inch border this time.
The upholstery is done. This took a lot of work and a lot of redoing, and I think it's gonna be good now. I've got a couple of wrinkles, but that's okay. It's supposed to be a squishy armchair, and I'm also redoing it. It's not coming straight out of a factory, so there's gotta be some variations. I still need to cover the uh, armrests in velvet, and that'll be the last little bit of uh, fabric upholstery I have to do. This has already been glued on with the spray glue. I need to try this out because this is where I saw the problem last time. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, that's a comfy chair. And that will just take care of any little lumpies that are on there. And now this puppy is ready for decoupage. Before I start on the process of how to apply decoupage paper, I wanted to show you how I put on the nail head trim. I could not possibly recommend this particular product any less than I do, so I will uh, let you know what not to buy, but this was way too thin and flimsy. Uh, it bent a lot of nails. Now it's time for that star paper. This is the main focal image of the whole project, so it had to be right. I first dry fit it by putting up against the back seat and then I just looked at it from different angles to make sure the cat was front and center and side to side centered. Next I'm using an artist brush with just a little bit of water to draw a line around the edge where I need it to tear off so that I'm not tucking the paper into the back of the chair. And you want to have a freshly and naturally torn line on all sides of decoupage paper. You don't want to have a harsh edge because it'll really stand out to the eye and it's much harder to paint it in. You don't have to be specific, you don't have to be careful, you just want to get it wet and then the paper will simply tear away. Spritzing the paper with water can help remove wrinkles. Now I'm using the Big Top After Show Top Coat from Debbie's Design Diary and that is the glue that I'm using to apply the paper. You can use anything from Mod Podge to different top coats to wallpaper paste to apply decoupage paper, but because this is going to be against your body and not something that's on a flat piece of furniture like a dresser front, I wanted flexible and malleable top coat. That's going to be the easiest to attach it down and then uh, keep it from getting crusty or crunchy. I'm using the Chris Donna brush to push away any bubbles or wrinkles and uh, just slide those out to the edges. And after everything was applied, I go over the top of the paper with the top coat as well. Once it was dry overnight, I used a straight edge to cut around the frame of the chair because when you sit, you would pull the paper and it would tear anyway. I wish I'd thought of this beforehand, but I still needed to paint the image into the back of the chair. So I had to do a quick calculation and figure out how to protect the velvet uh, so that I didn't get any paint on that. So saran wrap around the armrests solved that problem. I'm just using different shades of Dixie Bell paint and paint couture paint to take the image background and just blend it into the back of the chair. This is collard greens from Dixie Bell. And this is more of the plums and roses that I use to blend the flower off the edge as well. This is where you can have some fun with it. You can accent a color that you want to bring into the image. You can pull any color from the background that you like and just spread it out and make it a bigger part of the image. I had a, I had a good time just kind of playing like a watercolor painting. I had to put on more of that blasted nail head trim, although I have to say it was a little bit easier doing it around the edges of the chair than it was around the seat and around the armrests. That was quite difficult. Um, but I think the nail head trim really made the look and it was important to have it. I used a small artist brush to go around the nail heads and make sure nothing was showing white through the back of the nail head. I'm at the home stretch now and the last thing I need to do is add some gold accents. Eternal, this is my absolute favorite gilding wax from Redesign with Prima. And I'm also going to use the, the steampunk stencil from Dixie Bell. You may remember that one of the key parts of the Ugly Duckling Challenge was to have a theme of sparkle. So I wanted to make sure I added gold not only to the details, but also a little bit of that gold gilding wax to every nail head trim. 
I just brushed it gently over with the tip of my finger and then I used that same wax and a waxing brush over these silk screen stencils. The final bit of sparkle came from some gold leafing. I applied gilding glue to various details on the legs and on the side and then stuck gold leafing sheets on with a cheap chip brush. After a couple of minutes, you can just brush away the excess and leave behind the sparkle where you had glue. Well, I am all done with my very first Ugly Duckling Challenge. I am sitting in it. It is comfortable. It's wonderful. I can't wait to show you the whole thing in my final photos. But once again, this is hosted by Corey at Desert DIY. Her channel will be linked in the description below. And I will also have the entire playlist of everyone else who participated in the Ugly Duckling Challenge. Before we get to the big reveal, thank you so much for staying with me and watching this entire video. I am so excited to have you here and excited to be part of this challenge. I did want to uh, request that if you like this video, please uh, comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get all the notifications so that you know when I have another video coming up. And you can follow me on other social media platforms. I have Pinterest, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, I have a website. All these things will be linked in the description below. And if you would like to support my channel in any other way, I also have a Buy Me A Coffee app link so you can donate that way if you would like to support my work. Thank you so much and now for the final reveal. Do you remember our ugly duckling that we picked up at Habitat for Humanity Restore? This chair had beautiful wood carvings but filthy upholstery that I would say is at least from the 80s which makes it 40 to 45 years old and maybe even older. The cushion was still in good shape but let's be honest this is ugly. Now meet Dapper Dan. This chair has undergone an absolute transformation and is now a beautiful statement piece with comfortable upholstery, a beautiful background image, eye-catching paint, and of course, I made it sparkle. So what do you think? Did I make that ugly duckling into a swan? Or more in keeping with my business, did I make a diamond from the rough? Tell me what you think in the comments below and I hope to see you back here for the next time I do a furniture video. Thanks, bye.